Hi! Thank you very much for turning back in. My name is Fonny. In my channel, I talk about my houseplant and my hoyas. Today, it is a long requested video from many of you about my DIY hoya pots. Before I dig into the detail of what are the materials that you may need, I want to break this down into different parts. It took me a long time uh, to create this video, not that I ignore your request, it's just that it, I really want to kind of make a summarized video that covers um, everything that I know about the DIY pots. So then you understand why I select certain materials and I do it differently. So I hope this will be a informative video and of course if you have any questions you please feel free to leave your comment down below so that we can um, discuss separately in the comment box down below if you already like this video and you want to show me that this is the kind of content that i do that you are interested please be generous enough to like this video and to share this video with your friends if you don't want to miss out next time when i have similar content posted don't forget to subscribe to my channel. All right, let's dig into the detail. In this video, I want to break it down to three parts. First is show you close up, how does the DIY pot look like? What are the main elements of the DIY pot? And also explain you the concept behind, why do I want to have those um, materials in the DIY pot? Second, I want to explain a little bit on different stage of the use of water reservoir in this DIY pot. Thirdly, I want to show you how do I choose different pot size. I will give you examples uh, of my Hoyas to let you know roughly the idea of what means by different size and what means by smaller, medium and large pot. So then everything could be more visualized. Um, and please let me know if you need any clarification in the comment down below. So then I can uh, explain a little bit more um, in person. The first part, how does this DIY pot look like? I have prepared this one here. This one, if you recall, this is the second order that I have with LB Garden. I had this one around two months ago. I used uh, La Chuse Upon and I potted it like this directly. Uh, basically, this is how it acclimated uh, throughout the two months. And this is the structure. First, you have this pot. Uh, this one is the six centimeters diameter transparent pot. Then you have this uh, shot glass. Uh, it's a plastic cup. It is 40 milliliter or slash 4 cl um, size. And you also need a wick. So this is the three um, element that you will need uh, for the setup. It's really, really simple. Now I'm going to show you separately uh, the actual material, how that looks like. So the first one, this one, is the plastic container that I use. As I said, this one is having diameter as six centimeter. You should be able to get this one on eBay uh, or on Armisen. And the another item is this one here. This is the shot glass. Remember, you need to make sure that the bottom is slightly smaller than the opening of the water reservoir. So then you can kind of secure it like this. So then it won't really move around. And the third item is this one. This is the wick that you can probably get at say five meter or even 10 meters long. And then you cut the length um, as much as it fits your uh, container. And all you need to do is to insert this wick into the uh, plastic pot to a level that um, you make sure the, the length of the bottom part of the wick is long enough to touch the bottom, not just slightly touching the bottom like this. This one is not good enough because you basically wasted the um, empty space. And what you want to do is to be long enough so then you kind of lay on the bottom a little bit more so then you make sure that the water reservoirs water could be completely uh, used up and another key thing that i would like to explain is 
how long do you need to have the wick inside the uh, soil substrate? I think this one is not really explained in a lot of different places. Or maybe nobody actually explained this because this is my DIY pot. Um, um, how do I determine is I want to make sure the entire pot of palm can touch the moisture from the wick. If your wick is so short like this, the only part of um, soil substrate uh, that could absorb the moisture is just here, which means that it's it takes extra long effort to have the upper part moist. In other words, if the cutting has really short root, the root can barely touch the moist. So what you want to do is you want the entire pot to have the moisture. That's why I prefer to have a longer extension of the uh, wick throughout the pot itself. And there you go. That's how I created uh, my DIY pot. Another thing is you do have alternative. If you can't find this one uh, because there's no shop glass in the supermarket or the store around you, what you can buy is you can get the sushi sauce container, which looks like this. Generally, the sushi store will have this containing soya sauce. Um, important thing that you need to remember is you need to uh, understand how this works. If the this one is the pot, if this uh, opening is too wide and the bottom of the pot actually goes all the way in, there is no water reservoir. So what you want to make sure is to fully utilize the soya sauce container. Don't forget this lid. This lid is very, very important if this is the case of the soya sauce container that you have. You want to cut a hole of this one so then this pot here would have enough space in between so then the space in between could act as a water reservoir so this is what i meant you cut a hole in the middle and when you try to set it in you need to press a little bit so it's not so it's not too loose so then it's perfect like this so here you will have a stabled reservoir so you can see that there is a reservoir here and there is it's not so easy to move around so then just make sure that everything is fixed because if you are using um millsbo cabinet or if you have a lot of hoya to begin with it's so easy to just uh, make a mess for example this one is not uh, set in perfectly you try to lift this up and you ended up having a pond of water you don't want that, uh, especially if there is root mealybug situation. You don't want any water touch of the water reservoir of other hoyas of yours. So yeah, that is the second option of uh, my DIY pot. And let's move on to another area, the uh, different stage of water reservoir. Water reservoir works well only when there is uh, a source to obtain the water from the water reservoir. I take this example back. This, if you take a close look, there is already water root that go into the water reservoir, which means that even if I don't have the wick, the water root could also suck up the water into the soil substrate. At this point, you don't really need this wick here. This wick is almost like a assistance for the plant. If they don't have long enough water root, this wick could help to wick up water. So this is a further stage of the water reservoir usage. But the first stage, what you will see is something like this one. So this one is um, the first import I got. Uh, it is Hoya Exilis. Just segue, this is the pink leaves, that uh, the new pink leaf that it has. So this is the first stage. There is zero water roots. You can't see any roots coming out from the bottom, which means the only source of water sucking up is the wick itself. And this point, it is very important for the wick to suck up 
water. If the wick is too short, the water won't be sucked up successfully um, because there's no um, actual water roots assisting. Normally it takes two to three months, depending on the species and depending on how healthy um, the cutting is. Normally it takes two to three months for water roots to develop. This one is the second month of this plant already. And I received this one later, actually, this one is in my second order, but um, it is a much larger plant and probably the plant itself is more healthy the water roots comes out super quick. This is only under two months time. The water roots is already expanding um, so much um, into the bottom. So there are a different stage, as I mentioned. Um, you have to adjust um, the water um, that you uh, put into the water reservoir because in the first uh, stage, like this one, the amount of water that got stuck up only sourced from the um, wick. What I would say in the first stage, when there is no water root, it is easier for the roots to rot because of overly moist in the soil substrate. So what I do in the earlier stage, I don't fill up the water reservoir completely. Maybe I have just put down this one. Maybe I just have this bit. So then I make sure that there are a little bit of um, water that suck up and moist up the uh, soil substrate, but not in an excessive amount. The concept of thinking how much water you should put in water reservoir depend on the amount of roots. If there is very little amount of roots, you shouldn't um, fill up the water reservoir too soon because it only makes the soil substrate constantly moist and it's easier for uh, the roots to rot because there aren't too much root to suck up all of the uh, water. However, when the water roots has fully developed like this one over here, you can be very comfortable to add fully the water reservoir because you know that there are so many roots in this plant that will suck up the water and um, you don't really need to worry too much if all of these water roots are fully covered with water as the name indicated these are water roots that is developed to be in water 24 7. The worst scenario actually is water roots can't be dried out for too long. Uh, it will actually die if you dry the water root out uh, for say three, four days. It's not like the normal roots in the soil substrate. So that's one thing that you have to bear in mind. So yeah, the nutshell is the amount of water in the water reservoir depends on the amount of roots inside the soil substrate. If it is a newly cut uh, cutting without any roots, I wouldn't use too much of the water reservoir. As I said, I probably would just use a little bit just to make sure that the soil substrate is not completely dry. But as the root has developed and then you see that more and more roots requires more and more water, then I'll increase the water reservoir. At the time when the water root has fully grown into the water reservoir, I will maximize the usage of the water reservoir, which means that I will just fill up the entire water reservoir and let the plant drink up itself. Hope this explain. Let's move on to the third part, the choice of pot. The choice of pot depends on the density of root. Most of the situation, um, it is not depending on how large the plant is. If the plant is huge, but has a minimal root system, it is more important to have a smaller pot so then the root won't suffocate and drown in an overly moist substrate. And you can size up the pot in accordance to the um, amount of roots that it has grown. So in my situation, uh, because we're talking mostly uh, of Hoyas uh, today, for Hoyas, I don't think you should always keep your Hoyas in the tiniest pot because being root bound uh, will also have other problem. Could be uh, 
the, the leaf keep dropping because there's no in, uh, not enough space for the root to grow. However, the tolerance rate uh, of Hoya, of being root bound, is much higher than, say, philodendron, that they will actually drop a huge leaf just because they don't have enough space to grow the root. I think, from my experience, Hoyas are very uh, friendly when it comes to smaller size pots. And for myself, I like using smaller size pots as well because it just doesn't take so much space. And Hoyas are fine with smaller size pot. So I like to start with the size, as I showed you, this one. I like to start with six centimeters um, diameter size pot, and then I just increase it um, in accordance to the growth of the root. So let's take a look at some example to have an idea of what means by extensive root system, what means by not extensive root system. Um, again, I can take this one, this is obviously not an extensive root system. You can see that it is relatively large uh, when it comes to the amount of leaf. For example, this one only have three leaves, but the root is also, it's exploded in the pot. So even the size of the plant, um, more leaves, more branches, this has a much smaller root system. So this is not ready for the repot to a larger one. And this one, even though it has so extensive root system, when I observed um, how long it takes to empty this reservoir, it takes around five days. So I would say it's still fine. I'm not going to repot this one. However, I'm going to show you another example. This one here is another example. This is also Hoya campulata, um, that campanulata that I got from LB Garden. It's the same plant as this one. I just chop it into two so then I can have a secure plant for myself. This is a different story. If you can tell how much root there is. It's basically packed with water roots. And I just fill up the water reservoir for this one yesterday and half of it is already gone. Which means that this one is ready for report because it it will be too much work for me to water it every single day. There is a shortcut. If you don't want to interrupt the roots uh, and you want to keep it in a small pot, I did try uh, another method, which is uh, kind of like a tip for you if you want to keep this existing small pot but increase the water reservoir. That still works because as long as you don't want the plant to explode, you, you want it to have a moderate growth, it's fine to just extend um, the water reservoir based on my experience. What you can do is you can actually use a bigger water reservoir. I can show you uh, how. Because the this one is really small, right? The bottom is really small. If you just uh, put it like this one, if you put it inside here, this is a much bigger water reservoir, but it doesn't work, right? It doesn't work. And how do you fix it? I have a trick, which I just discovered recently, and it saved a lot of my hassle, is you poke a hole and then use this stripe to make a smaller uh, size over here. I mean, even though this pot is so much more wider here, what you do is to add these stripes and magic happen. It fits perfectly. And then it just hanged in in the perfect location. And then the water reservoir become this much. This is so much more than this one, at least doubled the size. But one thing that you need to be a little bit mindful is this here, there's some gap. And how do you fix this problem is you can, let me see, where's the example? You can use one of these lids uh, what I do is I use a lid and then cut a hole, which fits perfect um, for the uh, bottom part here. Pop it on here and then I can fully cover the gap here in between the pot and also the water reservoir. You reduce the leakage of water from evaporation through temperature. It doesn't look the best, but if you can find something with similar size like this, um, it's not that bad. 
because this one is like perfect size and then cut a hole pop this on top perfect um i really like this uh way of transferring a plant because you don't really interrupt the roots you just increase the size of the water reservoir and um, i can show you different size uh, of different pots that i use for different size plants um let me see so this one as i explained i will need to either repot it to one size up which normally uh, is this one this one is seven centimeters so this is only one size up or if i want to go a little bit further i can go for nine centimeters which is this one i can make sure that this plant doesn't need to be watered every single day yeah and then i can show you another size i have this one here is an eight centimeter pot for this one if you ask me when do i need to repot it i don't think it will be another at least a year the reason is because when i look into the water roots if you take a close up look there is um, fair enough of water roots but at the same time i don't have to water this one maybe in 10 days i mean i don't need to fill up the water reservoir in 10 days um, after 10 days i still see a little bit of moist which means that this is perfect for me going on a trip and also the root is not as crazy uh the water roots aren't that bad here i can show you some more extensive one in picture because i can't even move those ones um so yeah this one i would say this is a perfect size uh eight centimeters uh pot for this size of a plant i will still keep this one for another one year at least and then here that is another example this is a much larger plant if you compare what i just show you this one here is hushkoniana variegated this one is hoya gps 7240 like the grapes one the grapes hoya uh, the size is significantly larger if you have paid attention to what i just mentioned the size of the pot depends on the size of the root um, this one is because it has an extensive root system. I don't know if I can show, maybe like this, like this. This is a lot of water roots, it's just quite ew because there's a lot of algae, but algae is fine. There's no harm to the plant. But because this is a much more extensive uh, root system, I placed it in a 10 centimeters uh, pot. And this one, the bottom part is packed with water roots. You can't really see too much, but I wouldn't say I need to report this one anytime. I think I will never report this one actually because it's so perfect. Uh, it's just nice sized. Um, and another thing, another trick that I can share is uh, for the plant that I put outside of my Millspo cabinet, I always have a cover like this outside of my uh diy setup you can see the reason why if you can guess these ones are with green algae there's nothing here it is because it is covered essentially is anything that sees light the algae will have the energy to grow uh, because of the photosynthesis just like normal plants um, for the part that is covered, there's no light. That's why it is really, really clear. And that's uh, a trick if you want to keep your plant nicely looked. Uh, I mean, if you want to keep your plant having a better appearance, is to cover the part. Um, I, I had this question very early on when I started my Hoya journey. Uh, I tried to ask a couple of uh, Hoya person uh, here um, in youtube or in instagram but uh, none of them really know um is whether hoya roots could have direct sunlight to it at the time i do not know about this but i experimented uh because i really want to have clear pots it's so much easier for me to to water my plant and to know when the water reservoir is finished the answer uh that from my experience in the past uh, times that i have uh all of these hoya uh I concluded that 
is it is fine to have direct light to the roots. The main reason that I could associate with is because Hoya is an epidemic plant, which means that it grows on trees, it grows on rocks, it grows on something. And the roots is exposed to nature and there must have direct sunlight to the roots and the nature as well. That's why it's not a problem for Hoya roots to have direct sunlight too. However, the only thing that I can tell you in my experience is if you keep the uh, part uh, exposed to light and it is transparent, algae problem will happen. And that's what happened to all of the plants that I have outside. I don't mind because this part, I normally have something covering it. So I just see the white pole. And uh, yeah, look how beautiful this one is. It's just really nice. And it's pushing out finally the first peduncle for this pot. I have another one that pushed out so many new flowers. All right, this is everything that I know. And I kind of summarized uh, my understanding uh, of the DIY pot. It's nothing new. It's nothing that I created. It's just something that I want to make for my hoyas. I want to reduce the amount I need to pay for pots. I pay a lot of money for lechuza planters uh, because for the bigger plants, uh, most of my, no, actually all of my philodendrons, I use uh, lechuza planters. The reason is because I really like how it looks like in my interior um, area. But for Hoyas, because I have hundreds of different species, I don't, I don't want to buy hundreds of lechuza planters. It's so much money. And at the same time, lechuza planter is not super small. I want to have a pot that is really small, but at the same time, having that uh, water reservoir functionality. That's the concept behind why I kind of create this DIY uh, Hoya planters. All of my Hoyas are in this setup and all of them are liking it haven't got any experience of bad situation or rot roots uh, happening in this setup. So I should be quite comfortable to say uh, in my condition, uh, it works perfectly. Uh, but of course, if you have tried this uh, DIY setup, it will be great um, if you can tag me on Instagram or if you are also a YouTuber here, you can also tag me here. Uh, so then I know how many of you actually try that out. Uh, yeah. And if you like this content and you want to support me and tell me that you like this type of um, information, please be generous enough to like this video and share this video with your friends. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out next time. Until next time, I wish everyone is having a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.